as you may or may not have noticed, Robbie and I are really into the subjects of sailboats and food. Luckily, we had a chance to collaborate with Emily and Clark of Emily and Clark's Sailing Adventure and other sailing channels to compare and contrast the costs of groceries, food, and other items all around the world. You can check out that project at the link below in the description or at the end of this video and the other videos associated with the project. We've been foraging all down the west coast of Canada, USA, and Mexico, learning and practicing methods to preserve and keep the food bounty that we find along the way. Foraging often means fishing to us, a form of self-sustenance that means carefully utilizing what still remains. Really good to eat. Blue sewer crab. Facing off at me. Trying not to waste, because we know the bounty is far from endless. Up north, we found chanterelle mushrooms growing out of reach of the roads and city life. And in contrast to this, here in the residential and tourist-prone Yucatan Peninsula, we found oyster mushrooms taking hold of a dead tree, soaked by the recent hurricanes. Being confident about eating wild foods involves researching the shape, color, texture, smell, location, and more about the plant or animal. Discussing with those people who are more knowledgeable than ourselves, I went for a short walk with Celine, who has been traveling the world by sailboat for decades, and has come to know some of the edible plants that grow relatively untamed right here on the street next to our boat. You would never think that people collect food just from the forest here, but there is, if you know what you're looking for. See, that's a moringa tree. It's called so drumsticks. But it's there's none today. No, there's no pods. They make a very long pod normally, which you, are, you can eat. You can also eat the leaves and the flowers. They are very healthy. They sell them in these healthy shops, you know, in powder, and you can mix them with your drinks and your food. But we were looking for the, for the pods, and the pods are delicious when you cook them. Yeah. They taste like asparagus. You can eat the leaves in a salad. You can put a few leaves in your salad and the flowers as well. It's <laughs> very mild. It's just like green, like lettuce. Yeah. There's no bitterness. It doesn't even taste like the, the pods, the seed pods. It's, it's nice when you uh, gather up some greens like this and they're not overwhelming and powerful. Because and, I think people are, are kind of afraid of that kind of flavor. Oh well. These are very mild. And, and you've collected from this tree. I've seen you bring home yeah. some pods. Yes. And we've boiled them and you yeah. just open it up and the seeds are, yeah. are very tasty. Let's go to another tree. Maybe now we will find another place where there are some pods. But you can eat also the dry seeds mm. and they are very good. You're supposed to eat not too many of those, maybe yeah. two or three. And that has a strong flavor, like a yes. stronger flavor than eating yes. them cooked. It's like, it tastes like medicine. Yes. But it wasn't bad. Yes. And they grow so easily, you know, you just put the seed and it comes out. It's amazing it grows so easily in fact before you could find them only in india and in some far countries now you see them everywhere yeah and i've seen them in the caribbean there are lots of them and before they were known so we're just in front of our friend's house this is chaya i'm not touching it because i'm very allergic to it some people are some people are less allergic this is a mayan leaf that you can put in your food as a salad. You can use it here. They use it in juices. They kind of make it with orange juice and other fruits. And you can cook it as a spinach. So what we do, because it's so, or you use gloves. I'm gonna put gloves. It makes like a white milk and it's very, well, I have felt the burn of it. It burns a little bit. It doesn't last long. So you don't touch the leaf and what you do, it's like you cut it here. Well, you can cut that and then you can cut this, this part here. And you see here the milk kind of white stuff is coming out a little bit. And that, that is what makes you itchy and burning. But when you, then you put it in a sink with water and you let you wash it. 
and then you can use it raw also in a juice. Ah, so when you make the juice for us uh, with pineapple and chaya, it's just raw chaya? Yes. For some reason I thought you had cooked it or something first. No, but... no. I use it cooked like spinach and here they make a rice which is very nice. And right behind you, the easy one, the easy edible around here. Oh. Well, these are bananas. You can eat the fruit, but you can eat also the flower. Because when this is coming out, you can cut it. It doesn't need that part, so you can use that. It's a bit complicated to cook because you have to open it and all the little whitish flower which are inside, you have to put them to soak with some lemon juice. Ah, yes, we've eaten that as yes. well. Yeah, nice. we had a curry made of that. In India also, they made a lot of curry. In Sri Lanka, India, in Asia, they eat a lot. And of course the bananas. But they are not ours, so we're not going to yeah, take yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this is a house, but there are a lot of bananas in a lot of yards. And you have the right friends who will say, say yes to grabbing some bananas, then you can grab them. You can break a branch of this, stick it into the ground, and it will grow another tree. So it's very easy to... To grow it grows everywhere and here in in uh, in the riviera maya in yucatan it's just normal for people eat that a lot and they use it as medicine as well so this is like a like a salad that they eat here you, you can buy it at the supermarket also in french it's called pour pied it's like a succulent you see it's a bit um, thick And this one is green and very small, but they come a bit bigger and they become reddish. And then if you remove that uh, fresh part, inside there is an almond. But we might, we might find some ripe ones. Those ones fell off the trees. Yes, it's, it's a lot of work. I did it once when we were in Chagos. You know, you have nothing to do and we break them. We made a, we managed to have a little cup of almonds and I made some cookies with them. They taste is really good, especially if you spend three hours breaking the <laughs> almonds. <laughs> this one's softer, but it's gone yeah, black. It's gone. And all of the good ones pretty much have been eaten up by the Sorekes, the local species of agouti. In the pot, there are lots of cotton. People used to make their mattresses with that especially in Africa. What's it called? It, it's this here they call it seba, uh, but it's in, Fr in French it's fromager or the cotton tree. It's, it's making a big pod and it yeah. has lots of cotton in it. At a certain time of the year, I yes. remember when it was And really then when it makes the pod, it loses all the leaves and it's all flying everywhere. What it's, time of the year was that? Um, like winter? Maybe well, at the end of the winter? it's not now because now we see they have leaves. Nopales, or prickly pear cacti, are so common that I can mask up and go see the special cleaning stands at the grocery store for these fresh green pads that are delicious when simply pan-fried. Whether it's imported species like bamboo shoots and moringa, or native plants like chaya, we wash thoroughly and process as necessary before eating them. I think it's obvious that we wouldn't be able to survive on the food that we found foraging in this instance. Unless you are a type of Robinson Crusoe or one of those extreme survivalists who just goes to live in Alaska. This is not foraging for food solely for survival, but first and foremost, it's fun. Uh, there's nothing more rewarding than setting that goal, going out into the environment, searching, finding the foods, preparing them properly, and then eating them. Nothing feels as good as that in my opinion. Maybe you can name other things, but yeah, you have to do it safely and thoughtfully. Obviously, if you get the wrong plant, if you get the wrong mushroom, fish, or animal, um, you can seriously harm yourself or even worse. It's a skill that has to be practiced, it has to be honed, you have to do reading, you have to talk to other people who know more about it, you have to um, memorize characteristics of plants or animals to make sure that you're doing it safely. You have to follow etiquette in a lot of place in, in a lot of cases. So, for example, you have to consider whether it's private property or not. All these things together are 
the skill and if you can apply those skills then it's a lot of fun. I feel that local people are one of the best sources of knowing what is edible yeah. especially when it comes to plant and animal because one fish may be safe in one part of the world but not, might not be in, in another. Yeah you're totally right I mean then the next great thing that comes out of it is then you're talking to local people then you're learning then you're learning language then it connects and it, and it rolls so that's why we do it that's why we like it even though for a lot of people foraging is no longer a so source of main sustenance it has led to to many outdoor sports like archery fishing hiking uh, camping barbecuing yeah it's 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 a very primal uh, desire and it's a very primal satisfying activity to do in, in yeah our lives. I think that we've kind of determined that it's very inbuilt urge for for humans to go out and do these activities and it all comes out of foraging it all originally comes out of just the need the actual need to collect food so it's not going anywhere soon going away I mean, everything soon. Uh, every, almost even sport in the end comes comes out of, of a lot of the sports I mean running I mean, what did you run after? Either you ran, yeah, to run originally away. Originally, we were running. Either after you something. ran away from something, or you were running after something. I mean, yeah. what, I'm trying, I mean. what I'm trying to get at is like, I recommend foraging. I recommend the practice of going out and especially getting to know the plants and animals in your area, wherever you are. It has positive impact. But then at the same time, I also don't want to be like, go out and hunt as much as possible. Um, a large portion of our diet. Our protein diet specifically comes from Robbie fishing and I'm happier knowing that you're you're going out there and getting that protein um, from the effort that you're making and the connection to the natural world that you're making by doing that rather than just eating some factory farmed fish or or, or land animal we, we in Canada we met people that that that, uh, that live like that 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 hunt you know, two, three large animals a year, and that that's the meat for the year. They, they just do not buy meat in supermarkets. Or... If your philosophy is to connect with the natural world, then you're going to have a healthier relationship with it. And you become more observant, more of, observant of, of, of the it. changes. And, you know, like, if you do, if you are a fisherman or a mushroom collector or a hunter, when when, in, when environment around you takes a toll for one day, you, yeah. you, you, you notice it because you're out there you see it yeah. it, it opens up your eyes you're like oh you know like I noticed it when, when I was a, when I was a, a very young there was a lot more fish and less plastic in the ocean and nowadays I catch literally more plastic than fish so yeah how much connection and respect can you have for the natural world if you're forced to be away from it and never be in contact with it but then we also are walking a very fine line because we also disrespect the natural environment and overfish and overhunt. So basically if you are a forager, which comprises of all of the things you've been talking about, we should all do our part to ensure that we, we can keep foraging and that our children and future generations yeah. can keep foraging, can keep enjoying this most primal of, of fun things that we do as a species. <laughs>